You know, good hair is something that comes up every day. We named our salon Happy to be Nappy because we want our clients to love their natural hair. Whether your hair is straight, wavy, or even curly, it's solely up to you. What bugs me is when parents come in and say, my daughter's hair is ugly, nappy, they don't know what to do with it, and hopefully we can figure it out. No little girl should feel that their hair is bad. We're with moms today who are opening up about the pressure to conform to the idea of good hair in the African-American community. And again, that's hair that a lot of black women say is, is not an afro, hair that is smooth, hair that is straight, like a Caucasian woman, like an like a Indian woman, like an Asian woman. Um, and it's a pressure that even their preschool daughters feel. Now, before the break, Michelle admitted that she relaxes her three-year-old daughter, Rainisha's hair, three years old, and she puts chemical straightener on her daughter's hair. Uh, we have some video of this. Check it out. Hi, Tyra. This is my daughter, Rainisha. She's three years old, and I've been perming her hair for about four months now. As you can see, Tyra, all this on the edges, that's what we call kitchens, and those are what we're going to fix with the perm. Before I started putting perms on her hair, she would not let me comb it. See that? Ow. That's why. You like getting your hair from Ranesha? Yeah. Why? You want it like the girls on the box? Yes. As Michelle adds the chemicals to Ranesha's hair, her discomfort is quite apparent. Ow. I know. Ow. This is why she gets the perm. Ow. Thank God for perms. Ow! Does it burn? Where does it burn at? All right, we're ready to wash. My eyes! Just keep your eyes closed. You want me to wipe your eyes? Yeah. Although the process was difficult for both, mother and daughter are pleased with the end results. You like it? Yeah. Why? Can't see it. it looks cute? Yes. Yeah. Woo, that was like a ton of like, oh my God, emotions and pain and then smiles. And even when she was smiling, it was hurting me. When your daughter is saying, mommy, it burns, it burns, because she has chemicals on her mm -hmm. hair and she's three years old, what does that make you feel like? It makes me feel bad, so that's why I choose not to leave it in her hair for that long. You just do like a quick rinse a quick, in and out. Yep. How did you feel about your hair growing up when you were little? Um, I got my perm early, around 12 years old. So if I could have got it younger, I would have got it younger. Got it younger. And let me explain what, what perm means. In the African-American community, we call a perm straightening hair. Mm -hmm. I know that in, in other cultures, when you say perm, it means it's curly. curly. We mean straightening or relaxing the hair. Michelle's sister, um, Ebony, is, is with us in the audience now. Hi, Ebony. How do you feel about your Hi, sister Tyra. straightening your niece's hair, who's three years old? Um, I oppose to it. I really don't agree with it. My niece has very beautiful hair, and I feel as a young African-American girl that a mother should let their child love their natural beauty. Mm -hmm. I had my hair young, um, permed at a young age, and I didn't agree with it. That's why my hair was so messed up. It messes up their hair, and I think natural beauty is beautiful. And when your sister says that to you, I'm sure she says it to you. Not to mind her business. You tell her to mind her business. <laughs> well, with us are the authors of Hair Story, Untangling the Roots of Black Hair in America, Ayanna Bird and Lori Tharps. Explain to us uh, about our hair, black women's hair, and why it is such, such this, this issue for us. I think the first thing people need to understand is the idea that good hair, these, this term good hair, was not a beauty term, it was a survival term that came out of slavery. And that um, women and men who had hair that was silkier, curlier, looser, meaning they were connected to the white man, the master, that meant that they were more likely to have a, um, a, a higher chance of being freed when the master died, perhaps being a slave that was in the house, which meant more access to education, better food, clothing, warmth, mm -hmm. you know, the necessities of life. So we were not talking about slaves walking around saying, I'm cute. It was slaves walking around saying, if I have this hair, I might have a chance at mm -hmm. a better chance of life and survival. Because what is it really? It's connected to being the master's daughter 
or exactly. son. Exactly. Exactly. So, and it's like I said, it was men and women. We're not mm -hmm. even just talking about something for women. And so, this idea has carried over. Um, we we say that you know these concepts were kind of embedded into our cultural psyche, and it never went away. We were never like unbrainwashed, if you will, once slavery was mm -hmm. removed, and we've maintained these terms. And so. Part of the problem is that um, people don't understand the history of our hair. And that's why we wrote the book, so that people understood where the pain mm -hmm. comes from with, these, um, with the way our hair looks and what it meant to us in terms of survival. We have the, 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 the daughters of all of these women on our stage. I want to talk to these kids. Come on out, kitties. Pretty girls. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Okay, we'll be right back. We're going to talk to these kids when we come back. We'll be right back.